Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today for our picture book story time. I'm Miss Erin and we're here at the Caribou Public Library. Um, I have some exciting news. We are going to be starting some in-person children's programs here at the library this month. It's April. So I wanted to tell you guys about what we're going to be doing. And parents, pay attention. <laughs> All right, so any of you kids that are zero to two years old, we have little, little kids mother goose story time um, every Wednesday, starting next Wednesday at this time, one o'clock in the afternoon. So we'll be doing that here um, in the library, but upstairs in the children's room, okay? So for zero to two year olds. Um, then, who knows what this is? I don't know if you can tell from where you are. These are platforms that you can build on with Legos or Duplos or other types of building blocks. So we are going to be starting up our Lego days again, which we had a couple years ago, every second Monday of the month. So that means next Monday on the 11th is going to be our first one. Um, kids of all ages, you're all invited to join us. We're going to be um, having free build time with the blocks um, as well as a story and if you want to you can take the challenge we're going to give you a theme every time so once a month and if you build something having to do with that theme we'll put it on display in the library until the next Lego day all right so we we'll hope you guys can join us on Monday the 11th and if not maybe next month in May all right so that's Lego days we also are going to be having a preschool program um, on Wednesdays at 1030 um, for half an hour, maybe a little over a half an hour. Um, we are going to be still streaming or recording that and showing it online, posting it on YouTube and Facebook just like we do, but it's going to be an in-person program that we will then also record and post. So if you aren't able to be here in person because you live far away or it doesn't work with your schedule, you can still watch our picture book story time. However, if you're here in Caribou and would love to join us or somewhere in the close area and would like to be here in person, you are invited. Okay, so that's for two to five year olds and we'll be doing a story, a song. We'll also probably have some um, craft or activity that we do together here in the room. So hope you can join us for that. That starts next Wednesday at 10.30 in the morning, okay? And our theme for next week is mirrors and reflection, that kind of thing, so it should be really fun. Um, and lastly, we have an event planned. It's kind of last minute, hoping some of you can join us. This is for kids of all ages and their parents. We're going to be meeting at the Maple Moose, which is a maple syrup farm in Easton. I'm so excited. We'll get to have a tour with the owners. Um, they're going to show us around how sap is taken from trees and the process that it goes through in order to produce fun, sweet treats like lollipops and maple flavored sugar things and syrup and all sorts of things. Anyway, so that's going to be Tuesday, next Tuesday on the 12th of April, we're going to meet in Easton at four o'clock in the afternoon. So if you are interested and your parents can get you there, it's a free event, but we do need to know that you're coming if you plan on coming. So please call the library or stop by um, to register on our sign up sheet so we can know who to expect, all right? So I hope some of you are gonna be able to come. I know it's kind of short notice, but we realized that the end of maple syrup season is coming up, so we wanted to make sure to get that done before they aren't running, the sap isn't running in the trees anymore. All right, so there's all my announcements. How about a song today? Would you guys like to do the hokey pokey? All right, kind of get some of your wiggles out. Okay, so everybody stand up. Okay, and we're going to start with your right hand, okay? now. I don't know if this is reversed on the video. Make sure when you do it, if I say right hand, you stick out your right hand. Okay, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> you put your right hand in, you put your right hand out, you put your right hand in, and you shake it all about. 
You do the hokey pokey and you spin yourself around. That's what it's all about. Now how about your left foot? I don't know if you can see that. There's my left foot. Okay, ready with your left foot? You put your left foot in, you put your left foot out, you put your left foot in and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Now your head. You put your head in, you put your head out, you put your head in and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you spin yourself around. That's what it's all about. Last one, you put your whole self in. Ready, jump forward. You put your whole self out. You put your whole self in and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Good job, you guys. I hope you were able to figure out all of those body parts you have. Now, April, is National Poetry Month. And sometimes we think that poetry hmm, it might be not as exciting as a big long story that has a fun plot, but I think poetry can be really interesting and fun sometimes. So we're gonna try a couple of different things today. It's about poetry. And I'm just gonna read a couple of shorter things from this first book and the second book and then maybe read a few more next time too, while we're still in April, okay? This book is called You Read to Me, I'll Read to You, Very Short Fairy Tales to Read Together, okay? It is by Mary Ann Hoberman and illustrated by Michael Emberley. Who do you recognize here? <laughs> there are all sorts of interesting characters. We have Little Red Riding Hood and the Big Bad Wolf. <laughs> So today we are going to read a story. I wonder if you might recognize it when we get to the end. See if you know what story this is. If I don't say the title, I'm going to put the title. <laughs> I'm going to pretend like I'm the two voices, okay? So, I'm Goldilocks. I'm Baby Bear. What pretty fur. What pretty hair. Why are you here? You're in my bed. I'm in your bed? That's what I said. Why are you here? I lost my way. I found your house and thought I'd stay. And then you ate my porridge up and drank my milk right from my cup. Why, yes, I did. You weren't there. And I was hungry, baby bear. Well, now I'm very hungry too. Oh, goodness me, what shall we do? Where do you live? Not very far, a mile or two from where we are. I know the forest very well. I'll take you home. I'll trace your smell. Why, baby bear, you're very smart. Get out of bed and then we'll start. When I get home, here's what I'll do. I'll make some porridge just for you. Will you add honey for a treat? <laughs> That's my favorite thing to eat. I'll add some honey if you wish. You can even lick the dish. Yummy yum, I love to lick. What comes next? I'll let you pick. I pick a picture book to share. Why, that is perfect, baby bear. The three bears is the one we'll do. You'll read to me and I'll read to you. Did you guys figure out that that was the story of the three bears? What's the girl's name? Goldilocks. Yeah, right at the beginning. Probably a pretty good hint, huh? <laughs> All right, we're going to try one more. This one mm, is a fun one about Jack and the Beanstalk. My name is Jack, the Beanstalk lad. And I'm the ogre, Jack made mad. I lost our milk cow in a trade. You got 
five beans. That's all you made. My mother threw them out that night, and in the morning, what a sight. A beanstalk grew that was so tall, we couldn't see the top at all. You climbed it to the top, and then you stole my magic laying hen. Your hen that lays gold eggs. Why, yes, I stole your hen, I do confess. My bags of gold, you stole them too. And then my golden harp. That's true. That was a naughty thing to do. Now, Mr. Ogre, don't be mad. I do admit that I was bad. But we were poor and hungry too. You give them back or I'll eat you. I'll give them back if you agree to sometimes lend your hen to me. <laughs> what do you think about that? You're asking me to lend my hen? Not all the time, just now and then. And also for a special treat, please lend your harp. It sounds so sweet. Why, yes, it has a lovely tone, but don't forget, it's just a loan. A bag of gold, perhaps you share? A half bag's all that I can spare. And now that's settled, and we're friends. That's the way our story ends. Let's write it down. Let's write it now. We'll tell about the beans and cow, and how the beanstalk grew and grew. And when our story is all through, you'll read to me, I'll read to you. <laughs> there they are, reading their story together, Jack and the Beanstalk. <laughs> nice. So that is a form of poetry that rhymes, right? Sometimes, almost all the time, we think of poetry as something that needs to rhyme, but it doesn't always have to. In fact, there's lots of different types of poetry that doesn't rhyme. I'm going to show you something that does not rhyme. <laughs> it's a poem that I wrote. Now, if you're interested, we actually have a spring poem activity that you can take home if you stop by the library. Inside an envelope, it has lots of little cut up, let me show you an example, words on little pieces of paper. And they all have to do with spring time, spring things. So when you get the envelope, spread all the words out on the table or desk in front of you, Kind of sort them and look at them and create phrases that make sense or are kind of silly depending on how you want it to be. Here's my example. Sometimes I had to fit a little word that I didn't have already printed or change the way that it is. So the, the root word is the same but I maybe added an ending to make it make sense to what I wanted. And then I wrote this poem. It is called Spring is Here. Tulips budding, velvety and fresh. Warm sunshine beats down on the fluffy dirt. A colorful butterfly flutters brightly. What a fun surprise. Spring is here. Relax. And that's my poem. Now, did you notice it did not rhyme? Right? Yep. All right, so. Here are some other examples. This is a book called A Kick in the Head. It is by <clears throat> Paul B. Janeksko and illustrated by Chris Roshka. It's an everyday guide to poetic forms. Now you know poems can be written in lots of different ways. Um, here's one example. It is called A Couplet. And a couplet is a two-line poem or a stanza, usually rhyming. Okay, so how many lines does it have? Two. All right, two in the stanza. Here's an example. It's called The Mule. It's by Ogden Nash. 
this is a mule. It says, in the word, excuse me, in the world of mules, there are no rules. Rhyming, two lines, right? Now, another type of poem has three lines. It's called a tercet or a tercet. Another one has four lines that is called a quatrain. And another one I wanted to show you is called opposites. This form plays with the idea of defining opposites. It's written in couplets and is generally two to eight lines long. So couplets have two lines in each stanza. This is written by Richard Wilbur and it's called the opposite of two. Here's how it goes. What is the opposite of two? A lonely me, a lonely you. You see how it defines what opposite of two means, right? Two is two together, but the opposite is when they're separated, right? And they're lonely. <laughs> now, this one I think is kind of fun. It's called a riddle poem. The beginning of eternity, the end of time and space, the beginning of every end, the end of every place. <laughs> a riddle poem indirectly describes a person, place, or thing, or idea, and the reader must try to figure out the subject of the riddle. A riddle poem can be any length and usually has a rhyme scheme of A, B, C, B, or A, A, B, B. Hmm. So this one rhymes in the first line, that's A, eternity, and then we have space and place, so B, and B. So this is A, B, C, B. That's one of the examples. A, B, C, B. They um, give names of letters to each line. So this line is A, this line is B, or line number two, this line is line number three, and it's C because they don't rhyme with any. Okay, that's a little complicated. <laughs> Can we figure out the riddle? Let me read it one more time and then I'll tell you the answer, okay? The beginning of eternity, the end of time and space, the beginning of every end, the end of every place. The answer is the letter E. Let's look at it. The letter E is at the beginning of the word eternity, E. And it's at the end of the word time, has an E at the end, and at the end of the word space. There's an E. It's also at the beginning of every and end. Those start with E. And it's at the end of every place because place ends with E also. So the answer to the riddle is the letter E. Now I have one more before we get to our picture book story today. This is called an acrostic. And this is a type of poetry that you could write. It has a word, right? Um, with the first letter, <laughs> let me read the description here. It says, acrostic poems are descriptive poems in which the first letter of each line spells out the subject. So the subject of this poem is a cat, right? C A T, cat. So here's the poem. Can't avoid trouble. <laughs> Do you agree? That's written by Paul B. Janexco. Can't avoid trouble, cat. Okay, how about the one on the other side of the page? This is about a dog. So it's D O G, right? Dog. Does only good. <laughs> Do you think the author of that one likes dogs? Does only good, right? D O G. Well, I hope that helps you to see that poetry can be kind of fun, right? 
all sorts of different ways to write it. Ah, I have one more and it's actually a song. Let me find the right one. This one. Lyrics to songs are poetry. They're kind of poetry. I wonder if you, you may or may not recognize this one, but it has, um, it has a tune to it, right? This is called an obeyed, obeyed, and it laments or celebrates the coming of the dawn. But I actually know the tune that was put to this poem, and it goes like this. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning. Praise for them springing fresh from the word. Sweet the rain's new fall, sunlit from heaven, like the first dew fall on the first grass. Praise for the sweetness of the wet garden, sprung in completeness where his feet pass. Mine is the sunlight, mine is the morning, born of the one light, Eden saw play. Praise with elation, praise every morning, God's recreation of the new day. Which is written by Eleanor Farjan, and it celebrates the coming of the dawn, the new day. <laughs> all right, so now, are you all ready? Written by Jory John and Pete Oswald, The Smart Cookie. This is about a cookie who learns that she can write poetry. <laughs> the Smart Cookie. Greetings, I'm a cookie. I live in a bakery on a street corner near a river. Hmm, there's the bakery. That's where she lives. <laughs> Come on in, she says. Welcome to our little community. It's a warm and supportive place to spend some time. <laughs> Pretty fantastic, eh? Oh, look at all that. We have pies and cupcakes, cookies and donuts and pretzels in this fantastic bakery. These days, life is sweet, but my journey wasn't always a cakewalk. When I was younger, I couldn't have imagined fitting in here. For a long time, I didn't feel comfortable speaking up or sharing my ideas. I didn't feel like a smart cookie. I wanted to be a cookie who knew all the answers. A cookie who felt confident in a group. A cookie who said, aha, when solving a puzzle like this. Aha! <laughs> there it is. Now she would feel smart. Looking back, I had some trouble in my early days. I went to school in a gingerbread house. Our teacher, Ms. Biscotti, was kind and patient. When I arrived each morning, she'd wave at me and smile. But I didn't get the best grades. And I never raised my hand because I couldn't think of the answers as fast as the others. And I was the last to finish most tests. Oh, she looked so worried. It wasn't because I didn't care. It wasn't because I didn't try. Sometimes I'd get distracted and mess up, even though I knew the material. Those were the most frustrating moments of all. Once I misspelled the word dough. That was rough. <laughs> I 
Another time I added what I meant to subtract. Oh, two minus two doesn't equal four, does it? Two minus two is zero. Occasionally, we'd have a lesson where I had absolutely no idea what was happening. I just couldn't keep up. I imagined that my desk was a raft, and that I was completely lost at sea, because that's what it felt like. Hmm, that's pretty rough. At night, I slept in a cookie jar. I had about six dozen roommates. Move, you move. No, you move. <laughs> no, you move. No, you move. I'd stay awake and stare out the window and worry. And it went this way day after day after day. But then something happened that changed everything. There's hope. It all started with a homework assignment. Miss Biscotti requested our attention one afternoon. Tonight I would like you to create something completely original, she announced. It can be anything you want. Please bring it to class tomorrow. That was it. There were no further instructions. Ms. Biscotti winked at me and I gathered my belongings. Hmm. I felt like I had a million butterflies in my stomach. Create anything? Something original? Do tomorrow? Nope. What do you think you would create if you had to create anything? It could be anything that was original. That means never hasn't been done before. Something new that was just from you. When I got home, I immediately went to work. At first, I tried a cooking project. <laughs> the results were half-baked. Next, I tried to hammer and nail something. It, it splintered immediately. Then I tried making a sculpture. It was a complete bust. I wondered if I was about to fail yet another assignment. I was stuck. I stared out the window and watched the rain hit the river. There was something mesmerizing about the water, how it moved in such a chaotic way, swirling around and around, yet ultimately figuring out exactly where it needed to go. Suddenly, I had an idea. I decided to write something original. A poem. Aha, uh -huh, you knew it'd get back to poetry today, didn't you? She says, aha. <laughs> I came up with a title based on how I'd been feeling. My crumbly days. After that, the rest of it seemed to fall into place. I wrote and I wrote, I lost track of time. An hour went by in a flash. Aha, I said when I was finished. I couldn't sleep that night, but it wasn't because I was worried. It was because I was excited. I felt like I had really accomplished something. I felt smart. The following day, Ms. Biscotti asked for volunteers to share what we'd created. One kid showed off his original frosting art. See, he was here and <laughs> there's his circle. Another kid revealed her sprinkle distribution machine. Ooh, she's a cupcake. Look at that neat contraption. It was neat seeing how everyone was good at such different things. Ah, this one likes chemistry. Finally, Ms. Biscotti turned to me. Would you like to share anything, she asked. <laughs> I gulped. I thought it'd probably crumble under the pressure. But I made my way to the front of the classroom, noticed my hands were shaking. My mouth went dry. She was nervous, huh? This poem is called My Crumbly Days. I said, my voice cracking, and then I read it out loud. As I spoke, I noticed that some kids were nodding at certain lines. 
Other kids laughed at parts that were supposed to be funny. As I built toward the finale, I felt myself becoming more confident and animated. And in the end, everybody clapped and cheered. I promise you this, I'll never ever forget it. Ms. Biscotti was beaming. No one but you could have written that poem, she said. It was completely original. Ha, <laughs> aha! I had done it. I'd created something and shared it with the world. Well, my world at least. The rest of the day was a blur. By recess, I was already planning my next poem. I would call it My Sweet Morning. Ha, 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 I thought when I came up with the title. Later that afternoon, Miss Biscotti handed me a note. It said that I should keep on writing no matter what. That meant so much to me. Hmm. School was a bit different after that. I wasn't so scared to raise my hand or ask a question or share my work. Sure, some things still don't come as easily for me as they do for others, <laughs> but now I know that you can be smart in many different ways. You don't have to have the answers to every question or suddenly be great at everything all at once. You just need a chance to try all kinds of things to find out who you are and what you like to do. Here are some things she tries. Look, she's filming a movie, <gasps> skateboarding, Mm, with lifting weights, helping a friend, playing music. As for me, I learned that I can write and I can think of great ideas. And I found plenty of other things I'm good at too. I no longer feel lost at sea. It's more like floating down a river. And the best part is, there's always more to learn. Because we're all smart cookies. <laughs> Here she is reading a poem on poetry night. How great is that? <laughs> the end. I hope you guys enjoyed our day of poetry today and that you might be able to join us in person next week for our preschool program at 1030 or our zero to two year old mother goose story time for little ones at one o'clock or our Lego day next Monday on the 11th in the afternoon at three o'clock, all sorts of things going on. So I hope to see you here soon. And if not, I'll see you on the video next Wednesday again. Have a great week. Bye everyone.